Hi, this is Martin for Revelation Software and welcome to this video in which I'm going to be looking at a project that I've been working on recently. We released O4W and I wanted to better understand the product, not just from the quick start guides, but actually working on a real world project. And I've been talking to one of our clients in Ireland, a company called Artbrook, who have a payroll system. And um, it's been with Revelation for quite some time a rev and then through to open insight and currently there's a requirement to expose some of that data over the web in the form of an employee self-service system and i've been talking to the guys at arbrook for some time about this and obviously with o4w coming along it's a perfect match and um, i'm very grateful that arbrook have given me a copy of their database uh, so that i could build this little proof of concept system on top of that now, most of my videos are of a informative or a tutorial style. This one is going to be purely self-indulgent, just going to be running through what I've been able to achieve with very little code. Brian in the States has given me a little bit of code for getting employee numbers and things. Um, but in the main, most of the system has been created using the tool set. And obviously, I'd like to thank the guys at Arbrook and also Brian for their help and cooperation with this particular project. So let's uh, stop with the waffle, get into what we've been doing. Now the system is split into two parts. One is for users and one is for managers. The two mirror each other very closely, except obviously when we get into the managers, you'll be able to see that I can look up uh, employees. When you first log into the system, you're presented with a welcome screen. Now this is a standard HTML file using the template that I'm using for the rest of the application so I get a consistent look and feel. And the first option that we can go into is the employee info. Now I haven't hit the database yet so I haven't been prompted for a login. I hit the database now and I'm prompted for a login so we'll put Keegan which is the um, little test account that I've been using in here. And you'll see that we are presented with the record for that particular employee. Now I'm displaying the employee number. You might not necessarily want to display that in the real world, but I've got that there for development purposes. And if this ever makes it into the commercial uh, world, then, then that will probably be removed. But I've got a name, uh, I've got an address, no postcode on this particular record, um, email address and a phone number. Now all of the data here is just test data. So there's uh, no problem with uh, displaying that here. And as you can see the sort code and the account number, that's never real, but we've got the um, account details for paying the individual and also any holiday requests. Now that you can see that I've got a number that are pending, but I have been authorized to go on my holiday to Ibiza, which is very good. Um, and these requests are actually put into a different part of the system. Um, they're actually put into the holiday part of the system. So if we just go there first of all, then as a user, all I can do is to add a new record at this stage so it automatically drops in my details i've got a look up so um, today i'm going to have the day off so um, day off to produce a video oh, i've got the uh, up and lower case wrong there but I'll, I'll just save that so you can see that's real so we'll save that record over oh, w tells us that it's been updated and if we were to go back to the employee info record now and our holiday requests, you can see that we've got our new record in here and it's pending. And if I want to, because I've got this hyperlink, I could click on the, uh, the URL there and I could go in and I could just change this back to uh, proper case day off to produce video. So we'll just save that away. You can see that it's pending now in there. I've also got the ability to change password. Now this is not working in here because I'm just using the basic O4W login, which you might or might not want to. You'll probably want to handle your own logins and tracking um, what the employees are. So I've actually removed the ability to create new records and to look things up in this particular proof of concept. Um, so the employee info really is just sitting there as a placeholder more than anything else. And I'll expect Darbrook to probably remove that from, from the system. Uh, so sorry, that one there, they changed password. 
Now, two things that the user will want to do is to obviously look at their payslips. And this is an area where Brian has helped me. Uh, this is a screen that's been created using Basic Plus. So it automatically drops in the employee ID that's logged in. We can pick a pay period. So I'll just pick um, M1 for month one and a year. Now I'm using old data, so 2009. And then if I submit that, it's going to go away and it's going to launch Open Insight and generate a PDF. Now the layout for the pay slip is very specific and for that reason I decided to do it as a PDF so that we can get the, the colors and the layout exactly as we want it here. Now some of these uh, figures are in the wrong places and Arbor will need to do a little bit of work on getting those in the right place but you can see how you can get a very nice little report in a PDF very quickly and easily within O4W and this is basically just showing their payslip. So if we just come out of there and if we go into the P60 on this particular occasion I'm no longer prompted for the username or the period. Now the reason is obviously because they know who I'm logged in as. So under the payslips when we went in it actually displayed the employee ID again you don't really need that because I know who I am and the system knows who I am so in this particular instance the screen is a little bit tidier remove those prompts so I'll just choose 2009 and we'll go and that's automatically going to drop in my the um, record number 15 and the final uh, pay period and you can see there that we've got some summary p60 information and uh, we've got some tabs so that we're splitting pay tax and PRSI just to make it a little bit more readable now obviously if the employee wanted to print out that p60 I would employ the same process where I used a PDF to produce the p60 so that it was formatted nicely and um, the Irish revenue have quite uh, an intricate and difficult P60 to put together and that's under review at the moment which is one of the reasons why I've not actually gone that far in this particular proof of concept. Right so that's pretty much the employee side of things you've got the um, breadcrumb to go backwards and forwards in here um, if I want to so if I wanted to pick a different year then I could do so and this wouldn't necessarily have to be an edit line it could very easily be a drop down in the same way that um, Brian created for me on the payslips so you know that's all down to however you want to put the system together so if we then just come out of here and we'll just close all of those tabs down the second part of the system is for managers now everything thus far has pretty much just produced data for the employee. You've not had the ability to look anything up or get any pick lists. Within the manager's side of the system, obviously that changes. If I go into the employee info window, I'm initially prompted to log in. So I'm just gonna log in as a top level account. And this time I'm presented with a pick list and I can just scroll backwards and forwards through this I can see the record that I want number 15 so I can click that and it presents me with a similar the looking form than I had before I can go to holiday requests and as a manager I can see that I've authorized that one and that one's been authorized but I might want to go into 27 and I could go in and set that as authorized if I want to. So it works exactly the same way, except you've got that lookup as you go in. Within the password option, I have the ability to choose a user. So um, this will need tidying up a little bit. Again, it's gonna need a little bit more skill than I have because it's using the user ID from within the O4W system. So the Europay application and Martin, you might want to modify that so it just reads Martin. But if I click on there, then I can look at the password and up the permissions level. I can go backwards or I can even go back and search. So if I put a user ID in here of Europay Martin, and I do a search, I can just go straight in. So you've got this breadcrumb throughout. Uh, within the pay slips, on this particular instance, I'm now prompted for an employee ID. Now, I happen to know the employee ID that I want is 15, 
and the year that I want is 2009. In the real world, you might want to have a pit list or a drop down or something a little bit more user friendly than just the manager having to know that this particular employee is 15. But again, that goes a little bit beyond my knowledge. And as before, we just go in and we create the PDF. If I go into the P60, likewise as before, I can now put a employee number in and a year. And I can go and get that detail by clicking the go button. Or if I go back to the search and I clear out these prompts, then I can actually put a partial employee name in there. So we did search. And we get a list of results. Now, again, a little bit beyond my capabilities, but we might actually want to filter these results so it just shows the PFP as M12 because you wouldn't normally want to show P60 information midway through the year. So um, it would be nice just to have the M12 for 2003 and the previous years. But if I click on that uh, link, then it will take me through to that P60 information. Within the holiday module, likewise, another different um, sort of lookup. You've got the pit lists and then you've got these searches. Lots of different options within O4W and it will be a case for our book to decide which they want. And then you would normally have a consistent uniform look throughout the system. I've put several in here to give people ideas, uh, but I can put a record ID into here or I could put an authorization status. So give me everybody that's got a, a pending holiday. And I can see there immediately that I've got some holidays for Martin, John, Charles, Claude, you know, whatever. So quite a nice little way of being able to look up pending holidays. Alternatively, I might want to do a look up to see on a particular person. So again, you can see all of the holidays. So all of this functionality very, very quickly and easily put into the system. And I can add another record if I want to. Again, this is slightly different because I need to put an employee number in here. Um, somebody might have given me a call and say, oh, can you book me a holiday for so-and-so? So, um, you know, the manager can just put the employee number in there and away they go. A couple of other areas, administration, I've got some system codes in here and I'll just do a search on here. So holiday authorizations, I can add in a different, uh, additional authorizations just by doing an insert and then just typing in the new item in there. I don't particularly want to put any in. And if I just go back to select, I've also got titles. So all of the titles that are in the system and I can add and delete and modify those accordingly. And the last section that I've got in this proof of concept for managers is some reports. Now these are all to do with holidays and the first one we've got is an employee search report whereby I can just put in a partial name and a select. To return 10 rows, you don't have to have this warning showing but I quite like it because if there are an awful lot of rows, you might not want to uh, return those if you haven't got a particularly fast internet connection. I'm fine, so we'll just go yes. And you can see that I've got all of the holidays, which ones have been authorized and pending. I can open up that particular record, so number 13, and I could decline that. And if I was just to go back to the report, let's just run that again. And we do PHIL. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what I can also do is I could look up the employee number. So if I click on 41 there, then that will take me to the employee details. Now it would be quite nice if there was an additional prompt on here for my holiday entitlement and the manager could go in there and change the fact that I've just booked a holiday. So reduce the holiday entitlement by one day or build in some intelligence within the system, within code, that will pick up the fact that a holiday has been booked and adjust that accordingly. So the manager wouldn't actually need to do it, but the user could always see how much holiday they've got. So that's just a way that this system could be improved. Now, one of the other reports I've got in here are the holidays pending. I've got authorized and declined. Pending is obviously a useful one because the manager can quickly go in here and see that, okay, we've got 14 holidays that need to be authorized and the manager can see immediately that there are a number of holidays that need to be authorized um, within the system. 
and of course these reports can be downloaded to do a csv so if there was some statistical information in there you could download it to csv put it into excel and manipulate and, and play around with it in there alternatively just download that report to a pdf so that that could be reviewed on the way home on the train or, or whatever so that's pretty much what i've got in this system now everything that you've seen there has been created by myself many of you will know that i have a very limited technical ability brian shumsky has helped me with uh, one of the routines to get the employee number and he's obviously guided me as I've been learning throughout this process so a, a massive thank you again to Brian and thank you again also to the guys at Arbrook for letting me have this opportunity and the database. hope this has been useful for those of you that want to see a little bit more about what can be built with O4W over and above the quick start guide. If you are interested in learning more please contact me on the usual number or email address or David or Bob if you're in Australia or America and we will all be happy to help you and to discuss your particular projects. I'll catch you very soon and thank you very much for your time today. Bye bye.